Well, behind us, you can see we've got the big gear out already. We're here at North Mole today, middle of winter. I know it's not the middle of winter now, but we filmed this a while ago. And I can tell you, it's a lot cooler today than it is with you sitting in the living room. But Ryan, North Mole, yeah, you can get snapper and mull away. Maybe we can nail one of them, but we always bring the small gear to go for smaller fish. That's right, exactly. If you're not getting the big stuff, chase skippy, herring, whiting, tailwind, anything. Exactly. So we'll show you the rig in a minute, but important thing is you set your big rods out there, let them go, get the big baits in the water, get the small baits out there too, and you can go home with almost anything. Burley's one of the keys to getting the fish going, and with a combination of pellets and fish bite burley, Ryan soon had some interest, albeit from the tiddlers. Your rig is also important, but simple. All right, fishing off the rocks here, pretty simple rig. We've got a very small snapper lead here. That there's around about 20 pound leader. That one there's a little paternoster rig with a couple of uh, what I'd call shiner hooks or wide gap hooks. Baited up with a bit of prawn, that's all we need, fishing off the rocks. Tap, tap. Yep. I'm I wouldn't on. be getting too excited about that one. Uh, it's only smaller fish. Tell you what though, there's plenty of undersized fish here, but being skippy and tailwind, they're actually really good fighters, so it's loads of fun on the like gear. Oh, good fun on like gear. Oh, actually, that's not a bad size whiting. That's a beauty. Oh, I'm going look home. at that. That's it. <laughs> Steve's leaving. You can oh. keep you can keep your north mole. That's what I just got. Unfortunately, Steve just walked away. I think he's had it about up to here with me catching the bigger fish. Nice. I can still hear you, you know. <laughs> nice sand whiting. Once again, look at that uh, wide gap hook, just stuck there on the side. Comes out quite easily. What a nice specimen. We'll throw him straight back in. Definitely legal, but we'll throw him back in. You managed to put him in the rocks pretty often, don't you? Oh, look at that. Decent skippy. That's a good one, oh, too. Look at yeah, that. You've got the set. That's a good fish. You've done all right here today, mate. You started off slowly, you've lost a few on the rocks. Oh, and then you've come good, good skippy. There's no need to keep whining after you cast. Just the odd turn of the handle to puff up some sand just to get their attention. They're actually pretty good fighters in this light gear, so high up in the air. Looks like a good fish. Oh, this is great, just waiting for other things to happen. You know, you got your big rod out. Now, got to keep him out of the rocks. We've learnt from that mistake, haven't we? Oh, yes. It's not a huge fish. They fight pretty well. Now that's a tar wine, of course. Have a look at this. <clears throat> I'll try not to fall over. Well, people call them silver brim, but they're not a silver brim, and they're pretty common. They are a tar wine, very much like a snapper. And that's what the big rods are out for, so maybe that's an omen. That's the only way to get them back here. Tip tap, come on. Yep, got him, Steve. Oh, see, I just had my lunch and you're catching nothing. The minute I sit down again next to you, you must actually need the incentive of making me look stupid to catch something. Uh, look at that, that's not a bad fish either, Steve. You can now see the results of the burley. Not only are the fish more active, but it was keeping them in our area rather than them moving up and down the groin. Also remember when fishing from the rocks to keep your line nice and tight so you can feel every bite. That with it starting to set in, I reckon the fishing's gonna go off. Oh, it looks like a double header. Oh, but... Oh, oh well, <laughs> double header of undersized skippy and blowfish. <laughs> Do you go a long way to see that? Uh, I feel better. We've caught a few fish. What we've been doing is casting as far as we can, winding slowly through and just keeping an eye on where we're getting the bites. Now once you do that, you can work out if there's little holes or areas the fish are congregating. There's usually one or two patches. Now another mistake people make is to cast too far into the rocks. When you're going to cast out off the rocks here, it's nice and smooth. Hold it back nice and straight and just flick. And if your spool's nice and full with line that's not too heavy, and use a little bit of a flick to get it out past the rocks, then you won't get snagged and you'll definitely get more fish. Oh, yeah, that's a better bear. That's a better fish, Steve. He's taking Ooh. line. Might put a little bit of drag on that, Steve. I don't want to get him out of those rocks. You got quite a battle on your hands, Oh, yeah, it's a good fish. Oh, in the wash. Here we go. Oh, Look at that. Header. You got a double up. You got a double. Steve, I might get you to hold that for us. Oh, gee, you'd have to do everything around here. Please. Light tackle fishing on the rocks, eh? 
and you wanted to be my latex salesman. Top work, my Look son. There you go. <laughs> a beauty double header at Taiwan. And good fish as well at that. They're beauties. That's excellent. Well, Ryan, you've caught more fish than me, and you still want to team up with someone else to try and use two rigs to catch more. That's right. Well, my casting's straight, but yeah, <laughs> I can't say much for my friend, unfortunately. 